Hi, welcome back to Monotech. If you've watched my previous helium mining videos, you will know that the key to make thousands of dollars with one helium mining hotspot is the antenna placement. Unfortunately, many people do not have the privilege to place an awesome outdoor antenna like this. For example, all those people living in condos in NYC, most of them have to place their antenna indoor. If you're one of them and wondering why you're only making such a small amount of HNT every day because you can't witness other hotspots or they can't see you, or you simply want to improve your profit by replacing your antenna, I want to say that there is a very good chance your eyes have been fooling you the entire time. And today, I will show you why. Before we start, if you're new to the channel and you're interested in cool technology products, services, and projects, please click here to subscribe. We post a new video on a weekly basis. Also, if you missed my July giveaway announcement in my previous video, I have decided to support UNICEF's mission to provide food, water, education, and medical supplies to millions of children in the world. From now on, for every single like we receive in our videos every month, I will personally donate $1 to UNICEF, and this month we'll be helping out the children in India during the pandemic. Radio and light waves both travel at the speed of light, which is about 300,000 kilometers per second or 186,000 miles per second. In fact, both of them are part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but on the two different ends. Why do I mention this? When you started mining helium and looking for a spot to put your antenna, you may have followed other people's advice to put next to the window, or you just naturally thought that makes sense, right? Because the light comes through, I see everything outside, and when we talk about radio antennas, line of sight all day. So next to the window would make the most sense. Well, that is wrong. When you can see through things, it doesn't really mean that your helium miner or your antenna can too. The glass will reflect and refract lights when it comes through. But most of the light will make it through. That's why we can still see things through the window. However, clear glass actually has a bigger impact to radio frequencies at 800 to 900 megahertz, which is the frequency helium networks is mostly on. Clear glass can reduce your signal strength by up to 4 dB. Let's say if your antenna has 3 dB gain, in this case, you wouldn't be really gaining anything. And we're only talking about very simple, thin layer of clear glass. Nowadays, in most families, we actually use double pane or even triple layered glass for better heat insulation and noise reduction so you can sleep well at night. When the radio wave travels through these windows, they will be reflected and refracted for so many times and eventually it will not be able to make it to your antenna. Oh, and also those really fancy low emission glasses you see everywhere in big cities on those office buildings and condos, they can reduce your signal strength by more than 40 dB. Good luck finding an antenna that will actually work behind that glass. By the way, the relationship between antenna gain and signal strength is non-linear. Every 3 dB gain your antenna can provide, that is 100% gain in your signal strength. And that being said, I have already done the math for you here. For 3 dB signal strength, you get double powered signal strength. For 6 dB, you get 4 times signal strength. For 12 dB, you get 16. And for 23 dB, you get about 200. And for 50 dB, you get about 100,000 times signal strength. And now imagine your fancy glass window is taking away that 40 dB. Yeah, think about that. Okay, we have identified the problem. Now what? As Mr. John Wick has demonstrated that sometimes even if you cannot see through things, it doesn't mean that other things can't travel through. And for me, this is the solution I found. I decided to tape my antenna to the drywall. Most houses in the US have drywall as their interior. It only reduced our signal strength by about 2 dBs. I originally thought my building's exterior is made of bricks. Bricks reduce signal strength by about 8 to 20 dBs. So after some investigation, I found that the brick outside of my building is actually only a very thin layer of brick siding. So that actually works in my favor. So instead of shooting through my double pane glass, which is reducing my signal strength for about 20 to 30 dBs, now I have decided to shoot through my wall. 
Of course, before I did so, I also checked if there's any live electricity wire running through my wall. Live electricity wire will actually mess up your signal. You may not make anything if you have an antenna right next to a live wire. Here's the detector I used. It only cost $30. I will link it in the description below. Get your cell phone, save yourself some time and money. Hey, guess what? Even better? I have already read a bunch of paper and done all the research to make this spreadsheet for you. Find out what interior and exterior is made of, learn about your surroundings and see what location in your home makes the most sense to place your antenna. Some stuff to consider is high voltage electricity wire near your house can affect your signal. Try to pick a different direction to focus on. To avoid your window screen. Many of them are made of metal wire. Some of them are made of fiberglass, plastic wire, or other materials, but if you're not sure, just try to avoid it. Some houses also have aluminum sidings. Signal tend to get trapped in a metal box. If this is you, it will be difficult to witness other hotspots. See if you can put your antenna right outside of your window frame. This is normally less noticeable if you have a very strict HOA or condo rule. Your attic is another spot you can try if you can't use your roof. In the end, I want to show you something. When I was trying to find a good hotspot to demonstrate to you how you can check your uh, signal strength on your hotspot activities, I uh, found something uh, very interesting. And if you look at this, this place is uh, called Lancaster, South Carolina. And I was just checking some of these uh, hotspots and I realized, okay, uh, this is a countryside. It probably looks good. It would be a good spot to check out the signal to noise ratio or uh, SNR. I have found, wow, this, this, uh, there is a town uh, and all these hotspots are placed perfectly. They're seeing each other and uh, uh, great. Somebody's doing great. They're, they're doing it right. And on the Beta Explorer, you can actually check their uh, uh, antenna in signal strength. So what I did is I went to the old version of the Explorer. And when I came over here, I see that, look at this. All these hotspots are almost perfectly distanced. And Immediately, I was thinking, okay, this might be someone who's actually hacking. So there are some people who actually know how to hack these devices. So they have a bunch of devices. They place them basically all together. However, they can pretend that they are at different locations on the map. I want to prove my point, right? So I decided to um, check out these hotspots signal strength. And guess what? So we can see that... Uh, this hotspot has talked to all the other hotspots in the area, right? And we'll go check its activities. And then down here, we can just pick a witness. He's done. And you will see that that's all the witness, right? And in here, this is how you check your SNR. Uh, this is basically the signal to the noise background in your environment, all right? And this number should really change based on the distance, all right? There, however, look at these numbers. Minus 10.8 dB, minus 11, minus 10.10, .10, minus 11, minus 10, 10.4, 10 11, 11, 11, 10, 11, 11, 11. And look at the distance. The distance are just different. You know what this tells me? Most likely this person is hacking, okay? But this is the way you can check your uh, uh, signal to noise ratio and uh, you know stuff like this kind of makes me angry because if you look at this for every single device he's got he's making about like 150 average a month and this one is making over 300 and he's got a, like a total of 15 devices here and that means through hacking this person is making close to, I would say, $25,000 a month. You know, somebody just decided to use their skill in the wrong place. And then, you know, in the middle of nowhere, he's not providing coverage. 
comparing to all these people here who's actually working, improving the network. And there are some people like this who's just destroying the economy and trying to make themselves rich. Well, I really hope the Helium network actually figures something out and do something to this. And there's, there's actually a lot more places like this if you go look around. And I actually encourage you to look, look around because this is unacceptable. All right, I hope you have all learned something new. And if so, please subscribe and like my video. I will try to do more videos like this in the future. This is Molotech. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.